in this lesson, we're going to look at um, movable rockabilly car chords. There's something not too many you really need to know, and once you've got the basics, you can add notes here and there, and I'll talk about that uh, down the line in due course as well. So there's, there's basically kind of you know you most people know their major bar chords. So you've got your E shaped bar chord. So if you've got your E shape, you move up to the sixth fret, and you put your first finger on the fifth fret. That gives you an A chord. And you've got your D above it, which is an A chord. Moved up the seventh fret, and the first finger on the fifth fret. That gives you a D. Move that up two frets. That gives you an E. So if you're playing in the key of A, you've got three major chords, A being the one, the four and the five. So you count up, A, B, C, D is your four, that's your four, and E is your five. So those are your three major chords. But it can sound a little bit, what's the word, a little bit boring sometimes uh, when you just play the sort of standard major chords. So what we like to do is we kind of bring other notes into the chords and it just sounds more jazzy, a bit more interesting and that's kind of what rockabilly is defined by. It's really the, the other notes that you're bringing into the, into the major chords. So when we're playing the A chord, we spoke about this the other week, if you take your pinky off, it goes to an A7, you can play that little shuffle. So if you're playing a 12 bar blues, you'd play four bars on the one chord, the A. And you've got the four chord. But instead of going to that D, we're going to play a D9. And it's called a D9 because it's got it's got an E in it, which is the ninth interval. So there's only seven notes in the scale, and once you start, once you go past seven, you start again. So eight is the same as the one, so that's D, and then the nine is the E. It's also got it's got a C in it, which is the flat seven. So whenever you're playing a ninth chord, you're kind of playing a, a seventh chord and you've also got a nine on the top as well. And that gives you that lovely jazzy sound. Now it's a movable chord, so you can move it back a fret. That kind of gives you a diminished sound. It's not technically a diminished chord, but sometimes that's we're, we're hinting at other chords when we move things around. I'm not going to cover diminished chords today, but we'll have a look at that and if you come to one of the workshops we can go, th go through that sort of stuff. So, to play your D9, you've got your root on 2nd finger on the 5th fret of the A, 1st finger on the 4th fret of the D, that's your 1st and your 3rd, then you've got your, your C which is your flat 7, so that's, what you're going to do is then with your bar and uh, with your ring finger, you're going to bar the fifth fret of the top three strings. So you play the whole chord. So it's five, four, five, five, five. And if you move that up two frets, I'm looking for my whammy bar here. I normally have a Bixby. That becomes an E nine chord. You can play the frets in between if you want to. So we've now got one chord, four chord. So I'm putting my pinky onto there. So we're in A. That's hitting the G, which is the flat seven. I can move that pinky back. That is the F sharp, which is the sixth. So that is now an A6. Move it up. That is a uh, A7. Okay, anyway, these are these are just what you find is when you start moving your pinky around to get more interesting chords. So we've got the nine. Back to the one. 
this is another way of playing a seventh chord. So this is an E7. And what we do, if you know the C7 shape, move it up to the uh, seventh fret. Oh, sorry. And it becomes an E7. So because we've got the with the bottom string and the top string are both the note of E, so you can you can play that to your heart's content. Now the other thing I should point out is, so that's your uh, that's your root on the seventh fret of the E with this finger. Um, now you can move that. The, the string above the root is always the fifth, so you can actually play an alternating bass. Ninth chord and back the okay. So, I'm just going to show you a little tune um, Chains by the Beatles on the first album. So, it's going from that A7 to the A6. Two frets gives you a D7. Back the E then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the that D9, but I'm going to put my pinky as a bar on the top two strings on the seventh fret. goes the four chord. Please believe me when I tell you your lips are sweet. I like to kiss them, but darling, I'm imprisoned by these chains. I can't break away from these chains. Can't run and hide, cause I'm not free. That's just a few ideas. You can get a lot of mileage out of these chords. Um, the other one, if we were talking about that C7, another good one is actually it's all sorry, it's a C7 shape, it's an E7. So instead of playing the C7 shape, if you play like a B7 shape, and you slide that up to the so that your these fingers are on the seventh fret. That's still an E7. It gives you a lovely bringing sound. You move that up so your fingers, these fingers on the 12th fret, that's a nice E7. So that's just a wee sort of uh, taster for what's coming in the weeks ahead. Okay folks, I'll speak to you soon. Keep rocking.